I've received several requests over the last few weeks for a video about coloring portfolios. And so what sort of pages go in it, what should be avoided, what should you be doing? And that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. So welcome everyone. My name is Kurt. I have been a professional comic book colorist for the last 10 years or so. First off, what goes in there? Your coloring portfolio should always show your best work. I would recommend between six and 10 pages that best show your ability to help tell the story. Uh, if there's even one page that you feel you need to defend in some way, or that, oh, I was just getting started, or this was one of my first, and I just, uh, just don't include those. It should always be your best work. So where should the pages come from? If you've already started working on projects, of course you can include those, but what if you've never worked at all? Well, that means it's time to start finding some pages. Uh, DeviantArt, uh, social media, Google searches, heritage art auctions, find some pages somewhere and make sure that the art is good. If you fill your portfolio with mediocre or bad art and try to make it work as a colorist, you're shooting yourselves in the foot before you even get started. And if you can't tell good art from bad art, you're probably going to have a bad time anyway. Uh, this is not something I want to spend a whole lot of time on here, but just don't have your cousin, you know, draw your pages for you, unless your cousin is like Greg Capullo or something. And and if he was, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So what sort of pages should go into a portfolio? You know, what types of pages? Well, I'll tell you right after this word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I intend to launch a new drawing and painting channel soon, and I still have no idea what I'm doing on YouTube. So I decided to check out Marquez Brownlee's class called YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. I'm a huge fan of his YouTube channel. His skills are obvious. I found it to be a great class focused on exactly what I was looking for. In my case, how a pro YouTuber handles videos. Of course, there are thousands of classes on a huge variety of subjects with curated lists at the top classes in all the major categories. So you can jump right to the best classes right at the start. It's easy to find what you're looking for. You could pick up some new Procreate skills, get a better grasp of Clip Studio, learn some cool guitar licks, build a website, learn about logo design, there's literally something for everybody here. So the first 1,000 people to use the link or my code color with Kurt will get a one month free trial of Skillshare at the link in the description. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Learn some cool stuff and support this channel at the same time. Now back to the video. So what was I saying? What sort of pages should go in a portfolio? Sequential pages, interior comic book pages with panels. That's the only thing that should be in your portfolio. Editors can't tell if you can work on an interior book if all you have is pinups and covers. I also think it's important to have a good mix of different types of scenes. Uh, I would include a few batches of scenes, let's say two or three consecutive pages together, and that will help show that you can be consistent across the story, across pages, panel to panel, page to page. Um, and consistency doesn't necessarily mean you're using the exact same colors. Often you're not. But the consistency here just means that you can have the pages feel similar from panel to panel and page to page. And so I might include a few pages from an action scene and then maybe a few pages of just talking heads or something more emotional. You basically don't want it to all be action. You don't want it to all be talking heads. But I would try to find, you know, three or four scenes that show that you can tell a story. Help show that editor that you can help out. I would also try to show pages that it have at least some panels with depth. You know, a foreground, middle ground, background, that kind of thing. Panels with more than one element. Show that you can lead the reader's eye through the art. You might also want to show you can handle scenes at different times of day. Show you can color two people standing next to a water cooler. Uh, if you excel at landscapes or you like coloring outdoor scenes, maybe you might include some of that. You never really know exactly what an editor might need, but show the things you are best at to give yourself your best shot. And also, on a different note, if there are things you absolutely do not want to color, don't put them in your portfolio. For example, I'm not a big fan of coloring transformers. All that metal and chrome and shininess is very time consuming. I like the Transformers, but I wouldn't want to color them, so I don't have any Transformers on my portfolio. Keep in mind who your audience is for your portfolio. You know, for example, I'm not going to send a portfolio full of spandex superheroes if the publisher does all horror or fantasy books. And by the same token, if your portfolio is full of horror pages and you're trying to get work doing superheroes, 
you might have a bad time just because those are very different kinds of books. And from a technical standpoint, your portfolio can be a you know, PDF that you're attaching to an email or a website. Just make sure that it is actually curated to just a few pages. You know, like I said, six, eight, ten pages, somewhere in there. You don't want to send them to your Instagram and have the editor look through a thousand pictures. Like, that's they're not going to do it. So make sure you're sending them something that is just your portfolio and keep it up to date every few months if you keep doing more work. And just so we're clear, I'll, I'll show a couple of examples of some of the things that I would consider if I were building a portfolio for my own work. So uh, this scene, for example, I would say is a good example of a scene that uh, is really just a talking head scene. You know, there's a little bit of the environment here, but, uh, you know, we're showing that uh, we can be consistent uh, across the pages and set the tone, really, for the discussion that's happening here. Uh, there is also in here, there are some action pages, you know, so I would include something like this that has... You know, we've got characters in the background. We've got some close foreground and background here. Uh, we've got a few opportunities to show uh, the framing and the depth of the scene. You know, this is the kind of stuff that uh, I would probably include if I were building one myself. And even little panels like this one uh, here, panel three on this page, it's a simple panel. You know, there's only really uh, these characters which are leaving and this character who is in the foreground. But that does show that I've made sure to color this in a way that both of those areas of this panel are very clear and they both read very well. Again, big panel like this, showing the character, we've got some special effects. We've got the distance going here, we've got these people coming up here. We're showing there's a lot of depth in this image. Same thing with uh, even a simple panel like this, just having some color holes in the background shows that we're, you know, we have some idea about uh, that. And then this is, to me is a good example of a of an action page. But like a page like this, I thought was a good example because one, the panels are very sort of small, condensed panels, so the action is very quick, pop, 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 you know, all the way down. And so you've got to show that you can build on the shapes there from the artist and show that even with you know, minimal background and minimal elements per panel, we're still showing the action clearly and we're still seeing the focus and the action of each panel. But being able to show little tweaks and changes in the story mood and the tone from panel to panel is important. Like in this third panel here, where the blue flame is punching this guy in the face, you know, I kept the colors pretty local, and, you know, there's nothing too fancy about the colors. But then this third panel dropped that entire background out to basically just white. Did some color holds on blue flame, so you get this really dramatic sort of depth thing happening there. And it breaks up the pattern established in those first two panels. I asked my Discord for questions as well about portfolios for this video, and I got a few good ones. I'm going to run through those real quick as well. Uh, should I show multiple styles? Uh, I will say if you have multiple styles and multiple types of art in your portfolio, then go for it. Um, uh, that'll show you can be flexible, but if you are just getting started and you're only comfortable in, you know, say one style, then I would stick to that. I, I wouldn't try to go outside of what you're comfortable with for the sake of having another style. It would be better to show one awesome style than four mediocre ones just to say you did. Now, I was asked about ideas for promoting a portfolio. I don't know if editors are out there looking like scouring the internet portfolios. I don't know if that's a thing or not. Uh, I, I really don't know. It does seem like it wouldn't be the case. It's, it's not like higher Google results are going to help you much or anything. I would say the best way for promoting a portfolio is to just have a really good one. And if you ever do get asked, someone asked about how to approach an editor with a portfolio, but if you've been asked to send a portfolio or if you're sending one, my advice is to be as brief as possible. Chances are they're going through a thousand emails and so they don't need your whole life story. You can just tell them, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm a colorist. I'm interested in working with you on XYZ. I've attached a link to my portfolio here or attached to this email. Keep me in mind for future projects. If you think it might be a good fit, thanks for your time and be done with it. Get the point across. Hopefully your portfolio tells the rest of the story. I had someone ask about copyrighted characters in portfolios. That's fine. Just, you know, don't 
try to sell your pages or claim you invented Wolverine. Don't be an idiot about it. You'll probably be fine. No one's going to come after you for coloring Spider-Man in your portfolio. Uh, if they do, then this video is not legal advice and you should not be listening to me. I had a great question. How can you show you are fast enough to do the job? Well, you can't. Uh, you have to know your own limits. Uh, I think a good goal to shoot for as a beginner is to do a full issue, like a 22-page issue in, in two weeks or so. Something good to shoot for. Um, sometimes you have more time, sometimes you have less. Depends a lot on the publisher. But you have to sort of trust your own judgment on that. And I, I will say that a lot of that has to do with your own self-confidence. You know, you, you want to get enough practice in to know what you're capable of. And that might mean working on some things for free or working on things for fun before you're actually getting paid for it. I know I did. There were, there were always small projects, you know, pitches and four page anthology shorts and things like that. But, but that's how I got started anyway. I'll tell you the first quick, quick side story you may have heard if you watch me on my streams. I had done a few shorts early, early on, like four pagers, six pagers, eight pagers, stuff like that. And I got an email from an editor and he just asked, uh, you know, he said that uh, it was Tim Seeley's editor and he was looking for a new colorist for Hack Slash. He asked me, can you color a book in two weeks? I said, of course. Now, keep in mind, I had never colored a full book before, but that's not what he asked. <laughs> I felt confident that I could do it and intended to do it no matter what. And so I felt comfortable enough to tell him, yes, I can color a book in two weeks, but he didn't ask me if I ever had. I'm glad he didn't. So I did my book, got my first image gig out of it. So yeah, have some self-confidence. Do you have questions about portfolios? If there's anything I missed, and I'm sure I did, hit me up in the comments below. If you like my channel and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Check the description for a discount on my coloring courses, Patreon memberships, other perks. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.